Great. Terrific. So we are all set to start. So um, welcome everybody to today's program on uh, winter workout tips. Uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about um, how you can uh, stay safe and warm when you're working out in the winter time. It's rather challenging as we all uh, probably know, a little more challenging than when we have long days and nice weather for sure. Um, so, you know, there are without a doubt innumerable benefits to exercise in general. Here's a list of just a few of them, but from improving heart health, your body composition, blood pressure, decreasing risks of many diseases, diabetes and metabolic conditions, um, improving your bone density, your musculoskeletal health, of course, um, which helps with uh, activities of daily living, flexibility, endurance, um, even reducing the risk of um, some cancers. Exercise has been proven to do a lot of that. And brain health. Um, we know that it improves concentration, cognition, productivity, and overall just quality of life. So, you know, exercise is such an important component of, um, of uh, staying healthy. And um, unfortunately, you know, when the weather starts to get cold and the days are short and, um, you know, we have this tendency to really just want to kind of crawl in and hibernate, right? But um, I would propose that when it starts to get cold outside, it's really, really more time to activate than uh, rather than hibernate because there are a lot of... Um, uh, additional benefits. We know exercise really is a magic pill, but when you work out in winter weather, there are some additional um, benefits that uh, come along with that. Um, as I mentioned, it's more challenging uh, probably to maintain your fitness routine, but if you already have a great um, program going uh, that is an indoor workout program, certainly you can continue with that. Um, it might just take a little bit more motivation to get up and you know, if you're a morning workout person, when it's pitch black outside before work or uh, when you're heading back from work, you know, one of the tips I always tell people with regards to that is if you work out after work, make sure that you keep your stuff, uh, your clothing or equipment or whatever with you um, and go right there from the office because oftentimes uh, you get home and it's really hard to motivate yourself to go back out again. So um, if you're an indoor workout uh, person, that's a great way to do it. But when it comes to working out in the cold, um, uh, the um, benefits are a little bit um, in, uh, increased. Um, certainly a natural immunity boost. You know, you get outside every day, you get that fresh air. And importantly, you're getting the sunlight. Um, uh, if you can work out during your afternoon time, either uh, take a walk outside, get outside somehow, um, get natural light into your home whenever it is available. Um, it can boost your natural immunity. Uh, we want to make sure that we keep our vitamin D levels up. Um, and that will also help you, uh, you know, stay not only healthy, but also um, it's a mood lifter. Um, up to uh, 10 to 20 percent of Americans um, will uh, have um, some a bit of seasonal affective disorder, SAD, um, during the winter months. The combination of short days, uh, lack of vitamin D, lack of sunshine can really do a lot um, to your mood and your energy levels. So a lot of people can feel a little bit off, uh, even depressed. And um, that natural sunlight and the cold and being outside during the day um, is often recommended to uh, counteract that. Um, so winter work for a summer body, you know, it's, uh, it's really hard to come back from three months of inertia and, and you always feel like you're starting over. So if you can maintain even a, a, a modicum of your exercise routine during the colder months, whether you're working out in your home or, um, or going indoors, if you're typically an outdoor runner, or if you are, um, just getting out daily just for a little fresh air and a little movement, it will be really helpful for that uh, time often in March or April when we say, oh, the warm weather is coming, I really want to get uh, going again. Um, improve sleep, hugely important. And um, beyond all of that, winter workout can actually just be 
plain fun. So we know it's good, but how much, how often? Um, recommendations for activity in general are that we need um, about 150 minutes a week. That could be 30 minutes, five times a week, or get out and walk 20 minutes, you know, every day of the week. But about um, 150 minutes total of an intense, moderate intensity activity. And what that means when you're judging intensity is that you should be able to, you know, say a few words. You're not so winded that you can't get a couple of words, string, string a sentence out, but you don't want to be able to be belting out full on songs. So you want to keep your heart level up where you can feel the work somewhere. If you're on a scale of one to 10, around maybe a, a six uh, to seven. So that's moderate intensity activities. And, um, you know, biking, walking, power walking, you know, even some of the household activities that we do would be considered moderately uh, vigorous. Um, and then muscle strengthening activities, resistance training, strength training, at least two days a week, you want to hit all your major muscle groups. And those are the basic recommendations. But the nice thing about um, uh, aerobic activity um, is that it's cumulative. So if you uh, get outside in the midday when the sun is strongest, um, you're getting your vitamin D, but even if it's only 10 or 15 minutes at a time, if you're walking the dog outside 10 to 15 minutes at a time, if you do that a few times a day, you are certainly hitting your 30 minutes a day. So that's the nice part about um, that activity is that you don't have to have this plan where you're just committing, ah, oh, I've got to go, I need an hour, whatever. Extra movement everywhere helps. Um, so, you know, that's part of the thing, but um, purposeful movement, just getting up, if you're tied to your desk, getting up and moving around, even if it can't be outside, uh, I often tell people, try to set a timer and just get up uh, regularly. Um, so that's just regular movement throughout the course of the day. But there are a lot of winter sports that are really, really wonderful um, and, uh, and help with um, exercise. You know, there's so much fun. Sometimes we don't consider it as exercise. And right now we've got the Winter Olympics going on and you're seeing some examples of some of those really um, terrific sports. But these are not just fun. Although the Olympians make it look really easy, a lot of these um, exercises, uh, form sports rather that we're seeing are really um, heavy duty calorie burners. Um, I've got a chart here that just shows you uh, for an average, um, so 150 pound person, um, what would, um, what would the exercise, uh, the calorie burn be based on how long you do some of these activities. And um, one of the ones, you know, that really always strikes me is that the ice dancing, you know, skating and dancing, you see them in the Olympics and they just look effortless. It looks like it's just, they're born to do it. Like they're barely exerting themselves. But I mean, look at the calorie burn, 30 minutes of that 500 calories. So, um, these um, uh, exercise programs uh, or these sports rather are, are truly um, great activities to do to fulfill your um, exercise prescription um, on a regular basis. And they're really fun and they're really fun to watch. Um, so uh, they're also um, great uh, uh, with terms of muscular strength. The, you know, a lot of these exercises that you're looking at, you're building muscular strength. Um, think about um, ice skating again or ice hockey, you know, great for your lower body, lower body strength builds um, both muscular endurance and muscular strength. And then some of the standard things we do like snow shoveling, that's certainly a, a bit of a workout. And sledding seems easy going down, but you're pulling that sled up. So that's, uh, you know, an endurance uh, workout as well as a strength workout. So lots of um, great winter sports that uh, we can participate in to um, keep us active through the winter months. Um, and beyond the uh, Olympic sports, there's just some other really fun things that, um, you know, we often think of exercise as having to be like a, a, a specific program, but there really are a lot of fun things that uh, we can do in the winter, um, some of them here that are um, going to uh, fit the bill in terms of um, exercise prescription, you know, sledding, snow, snowman making, um, snowball fights, whatever, 
These are all um, different kinds of activities. We would call them um, NEAT activities or non-exercise activity. Um, thermogenesis is, means you're still burning calories when you're doing, doing these. So what great way to um, increase endurance, work your heart and um, burn calories than being out having fun with your family, right? There's a lot of ways to do that. So um, whether it's uh, skiing, snowing, uh, snow, snowman making, snowball fights, whatever, or if you are a regular uh, runner or walker and you love, love to do that, but in the winter you find it harder to, um, the key to maintaining any activity outside, uh, whether it's uh, fun with the family or um, your standard workout, your, your regular walks or runs is to be prepared. And the most important thing really would be um, your winter workout gear. So the first things that we want to be able to do, and here's a great little chart that I found that just talks about um, different layers based on temperature. The only thing I would say about this is when it's saying below 20 and you still need the lightweight jacket, I might opt for something a little heavier and perhaps even uh, a little longer for that. But um, when we talk about working out in the winter, um, there's some really uh, important things to remember as far as maintaining uh, preparedness. Um, so the first thing would be you want to be checking conditions. You want to think about, well, what is the wind chill factor? It can look beautifully sunny out, but we all know that sometimes that wind can, um, you know, make the effective temperature much lower and also um, be very difficult to work out outside in. You want to think about uh, ice, black ice in particular. We don't want to have fall. So, you know, sometimes if you're used to being out early in the morning, you, if you have the opportunity to wait till the sun's, uh, you know, heated up the ground a little bit and made it a little less slippery, that's always a great idea. But knowing your ground conditions is important as well. Um, and, um, and if it's going to be wet, to make sure that you know what you're looking at, dry, wet, you know, sometimes a, a little um, snow falling can barely um, make you feel wet, but sometimes we have that real slushy stuff that you have to address. So knowing the conditions is important. And the second most important thing I would think uh, would be um, dressing according to those conditions. So when we dress for winter, we think about dressing in layers. Um, and um, Dressing in layers, you want to start with, you know, a base layer, and that layer is really a layer to wick sweat away because uh, the, the quickest way to um, hypothermia is to have wet against your skin, um, you know, laying on. So that's why they say cotton fabrics, which would absorb all that moisture versus wicking it away, are not necessarily your best choice. So you want to layer that first layer thinking about wicking away. So uh, wearing something um, performance gear or lightweight, high performance wicking material. Think under armor when they would have heat gear or cool gear. Um, you know, the uh, fabrics are um, usually a poly fabric and it um, is meant to draw the moisture out and away from your skin. Um, and even in terms of your feet, you want to make sure, you know, a cotton sock and a, and a shoe, uh, you might get colder sooner. So um, moisture uh, wicking fabrics there as well, um, or wool socks. Um, the second layer that we're looking at is um, about insulating. It's about trapping heat between the base layer and the second layer and keeping it near your skin. And a lot of times fabrics for that might be uh, fleece lined sweatshirts, um, depending on your your preference or polar fleece or uh, something that has a little bit of a um, uh, extra uh, fleecy kind of fabric inside. I know I have a uh, zip up that has sort of a, it's not a heavy fleece, but sort of a fleeced line and that really keeps you warm. So your second layer is really all about trapping the heat in. Um, and then we look at uh, a third layer if you're using it, and that layer is about blocking. Um, we're wearing something that's breathable that can block the wind. Um, if it's going to be wet out, you want it to be water resistant. Um, you want it to hold the warmth in while blocking out the cold air and the wind. Um, and so that's 
uh, you know, if you ski, you often see the shell on the outside. It's a very tightly woven sort of uh, Gore-Tex or tightly woven um, piece. And uh, that's your third layer. Um, and then when you go from there, you start to get into um, all your additional items, your add-ons, um, head coverings. We all know that you lose a lot of um, heat through your head, so something to cover your head. Uh, neck and scar, you know, scarf for your neck. It's also great to be able to put over your face. Um, and then keeping your hands, you know, your uh, extremities will get colder faster. So making sure you have good footwear and keeping your hands warm. Those are really important. Um, and you know, when we're out in that really cold, cold stuff. We have those wonderful little heat warmers and foot warmers that you can use, the little packets that you break in half and um, have in your um, gloves or mittens. Um, in terms of um, hand warmth, um, it's a personal choice. I always find mittens a little warmer for me because my fingers can uh, be together. Um, but if you're a runner, you might get sweaty. And so you, a lighter glove might be in uh, more your um, choice for that. Um, and when we're talking about running in general, and I know there's a lot of folks who do the marathon and they have to run all winter to get those long runs in and their runs in. So uh, running is, um, you know, your body is, is a pretty vigorous sport and your body's going to heat up. So it's particularly important with running that you have your layers that you are able to remove them as you really start to heat up. And you really want to be watching the temperature and you want to be watching the ground freezing, things like that. Uh, footwear for runners Generally, our sneakers uh, are, are designed with mesh um, and it's made, you know, pretty light to allow heat to escape from our feet. Um, but in the winter, that also lets the cold in. So if you are uh, new to running and this is your first winter, if you haven't gone through it and you're not sure, you may want to um, talk to a running store. They do sell um, running shoe or shoe covers, or they sell cold weather running shoes where you would have a bit of a tighter weave. So you're not going to lose as much heat through them. Um, another really important thing with that is making sure that you have good traction. Um, some of the other, um, uh, things that you want to think about is um, if you need to be out working out outside, or if you're going to be working out outside, um, during the dark or when it's starting to get dark, you want to make sure that you are wearing bright colors, um, either, you know, bright jackets and things or neon vest, safety vests. Um, they even have them that light up with flashers uh, or headlamps, things like that. You want to make sure that you are um, wearing bright colors so that people can see you because visibility is often reduced. Um, if you're going to be out for a long time, hiking outside or whatever, you want to make sure you have all your equipment with you and a place to store your layers as you take them off. So a, a, a backpack, um, snack and water, things like that. Um, and then uh, whatever is exposed for skin, particularly if there's a heavy wind chill, you want to um, make sure that you're um, keeping your skin protected. In general, in the winter, it's really important to make sure that we're um, keeping um, hydrated, uh, both by drinking water, but also um, inside air is often very, very dry, and it can be um, problematic for your respiratory system. So if you have a super dry air, you know, maybe a humidifier you might want to consider in your home or your office. Um, and uh, the last piece of that is sunblock. Um, the solar effect is really amplified when we're talking about snow cover, um, reflecting up to about 80% of UV rays. And if you're doing something that involves like skiing or hiking that involves elevation, that solar effect is increased with elevation. So sunblock is extremely important if you're going to be out in the sun during the winter months. Um, and also, uh, if you have um, sensitivity uh, to your skin, I know that I, when I walk in the winter, would often get very, very red and ruddy on my skin. It would take a long time. Um, you want to might want to do a, a coating um, a, on your skin, whatever might be exposed to protect it. So I would do like a Vaseline or an Aquaphor, something heavy all across my face. 
um, to make sure that uh, I'm not, you know, getting my skin all, all uh, exposed. Um, so yeah, there's uh, somebody mentioned that thinking about the different layers. There are um, there are a lot of performance fabrics out there. The different sports companies make Nike, as I mentioned, Under Armour, um, even your um, even your uh, workout gear um, from Lulu or the other uh, you know stores, uh, uh, Athleta, offer a lot of different layering um, options. Um, if you're a runner out, when it comes to our lower body, uh, things like pants, you know, there are fleece line tights to run in. Um, you, you could run in um, a base layer with a, um, a wind resistant layer over the top of it. I know I used to put on a fleece line tight and then a pair of um, uh, sweatpants over the top that would um, break the wind. Um, make it, um, you know, not get through. So think of like an Adidas or that kind of a thing, just to keep, um, keep that uh, a little bit warmer on your lower body too. So yeah, layering is really the key, the absolute key to being prepared and being able to be outside and getting your workouts in. That's one of the uh, biggest things. Um, so, you know, you've got all your layers on, you're ready to go out, but uh, before you get to that point, there's a few other things that you wanna consider if you're going to be out in the cold doing a workout. First thing is you wanna make sure that you're warmed up and you wanna warm up inside. And the kind of warm up is not laying on your back and doing static stretches. Those holding stretches um, is for really for the end of your workout when you know when you've worked your body. But you want to be doing what we call a dynamic warm up. So what that is is movement patterns that you know high knees or uh, marching in place, swinging your arms, doing things like that. You want to get your heart rate elevated. You want to get your body warmed up, and you want to move your muscles in the in the way and in the range of motion that you will be using during your workout. So a dynamic warm up and you want to be doing that indoors first <coughs> excuse me another thing is about breathing when you're outside in the cold uh, breathing outside feels very different in cold weather than it does in warm weather that cold dry air as you're taking it in can create um, a little narrowing in your airway passages. So breathing through our nose is great because it can warm and humidify the air, but it's also hard and very cold, dry air. So think about wrapping a scarf or bandana or uh, you know, um, those neck cowls, things like that, up over the top of your uh, nose. We're all used to being masked these, these days anyway. But if you wrap that over the top of your nose when you're running, if it's very cold, particularly if there's a wind chill, what that's going to do is it's going to create moisture in the fabric. So when you're breathing in through your nose, that moisture almost acts as a humidifier, helping to humidify the air that you're bringing into your lungs, making it easier. Um, so that's, uh, you know, an important aspect of it. Um, you want to make sure that you're peeling off layers. If you've layered up properly and you're out and you're working hard and your body's really, body temperature is really heating up, you want to make sure that you're able to peel those layers, layers off because you don't want to overheat um, and get really, really sweaty. Um, another thing is hydration, super important. We wanna make sure that you're hydrating. Um, we don't always feel thirsty, particularly in colder weather, but you still need um, hydration. You're always losing water through sweat and breathing, expiration. Sipping um, throughout a long workout, uh, like marathon training runs is, is really important or long hikes. Um, if you're out there really uh, doing, you know, moderately vigorous activity for 90 minutes and more, you wanna also think about um, doing a, an electrolyte or carb and electrolyte replacement. So, you know, you see runners, they'll often, often have like goop packets or, um, you know, that's the time if you're really working out that hard and losing a lot of um, uh, body sweat, you're losing electrolytes, you would want to have an electrolyte type of a drink with you. Um, and, you know, honestly, hydration in general in the winter, we often um, 
might be great during the summer. We think about drinking more water, but in the winter it can suffer. So, you know, you want to just make sure that you're hydrated. And one of the ways to be sure about that is, um, you know, honestly checking the color of your urine when, uh, when you go, it should be, it should be pale, um, not completely clear because then you might be over hydrating, but that's an important aspect because hydration is so important for your body um, and your brain. You know, you get that lethargic feeling late in the day. And sometimes, uh, particularly in the winter months, that might be more related to uh, being dehydrated than um, actually being tired. Um, again, the other things are you want to make sure that you have proper footwear. So if we look up here, um, these sneakers, I think if you can see the bottom of them and my little clicker here, they actually have um, a, a thicker almost like a spiky kind of base. And that's really important if you're doing a lot of running or walking um, out in snow, you want to make sure that you have uh, footwear that is going to um, keep you upright and protect you from falling, be able to uh, grip the ground a little bit. So that's um, where, you know, working with a good um, running store and or doing some research on winter running shoes would be important. Now, the other thing is too, is that if you're out uh, doing other activities in the winter, you know, you don't want to be wearing a low sock and having your ankles exposed or where water or snow can get into your feet. So, you know, you might want a taller sock um, that goes over the top of your, um, of your base layer too, just to keep uh, moisture and snow out of there. And, um, and if you're gonna be hiking through uh, piles of snow, you know, you wanna make sure you have boots and that again, they're, they're designed in such a way or you have your snow pants or a top layer over the top so you're not gonna get water into the boot, um, getting your feet all wet. And then again, because the days are so short and sometimes we have to work out when it's either dusk or the sun hasn't quite come up yet in the morning. Um, I This is a great uh, picture of uh, somebody who's doing it the right way with a um, vest on that um, people can see. The only thing he's missing is probably a hat, but I'm hoping he got so hot he had to take it off. So those are a few of the other um, you know, interesting things that you wanna think about with regards to maintaining an outdoor workout. Um, and so um, the last part is uh, getting back home. Finally, the reward for all the hard work that you did. Um, so when you get back in, following up, uh, first thing you want to do is make sure you change out of wet clothing because um, you might be hot when you first walk into the house. Um, but as that moisture sits on your skin, you can get chilled pretty quickly. So you want to get changed out of wet clothing um, so the chill doesn't set in. You want to always cool down at the end of a workout. Um, so if you've been out running, you know, just uh, thinking about getting inside to the warmth or whatever, but you wanna make sure if you've done a vigorous workout that you allow yourself a cool down time. Um, and then come in, you wanna change out of those wet clothes. Um, uh, and, um, you know, usually by the, after being out in the cold, I don't know about all of you, but when I come back in that fresh air, I really feel like you have, um, energized, uh, you know, from the, from the cold, um, cold air. So it's time to sit back and enjoy yourself uh, some healthy meals, a lot of great healthy meals we can make in the winter time, soups and stews, things like that, or uh, uh, just a nice, um, my favorite cup of hot chocolate while uh, sitting around the fireplace. So those are some tips for winter workouts. And um, I think we're right about a few minutes left here. If anybody has any questions, um, I have the chat box open. So feel free to post it on there. I will um, kick around for a few minutes because I know that sometimes it takes a minute or two to type it um, into the chat box. But I hope you took home just a few tips um, to keep you moving uh, safely and warmly. Wool socks that are thin enough to fit into a sneaker. Good question. Um, you know, I know like uh, ski socks, you can get them in different um, thicknesses. So uh, my assumption would be you would be able to do that. Again, I would check with a, um, 
you know, a, a good running store in your area to see what they have out there. Um, also nylons, um, I, you know, growing up, I remember we always used to say put nylons on first, you know, so something along that idea, but also REI would be a great place to look into that as well. Yeah, Smart Wool is a great company. They do a terrific job with um, ski, ski socks too. I think I have a couple pairs of those. Um, Teresa, thank you for, uh, for that. And um, I'm hoping everybody got a few little tidbits of information to make you wanna get out there. And 